This video is about the properties of dilations. And in this video, we hit one CCRSM standard, SRT1, where we will verify experimentally two properties of dilations. One is that a dilation takes a line to a parallel line and that a line segment is longer or shorter um, with the exact ratio given by the scale factor. Let's get started. Before I teach you about how to do dilations, I want to review two concepts. One is how to find the distance um, or a shortcut to finding the distance of segments and also finding slopes. So first, finding distances. Um, you probably know the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, if you take the Pythagorean theorem and take the square root of both sides, then on this side, the square root and the square like are opposites, and so you get c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, why that's useful to us is that is the most direct way to find the distance on the coordinate plane. Let me show you. So in number one, um, I know it's a segment, but I can think about it like the hypotenuse of this right triangle or this right triangle. Okay, I typically think about the one underneath it, but you can go either way. Okay, the horizontal difference is one, two, three, four, and the vertical difference dis, uh, difference is one, two, three, four, five. So this length right here, based on that shortened Pythagorean theorem distance method, is the square root of 4 squared plus 5 squared. So I get the square root of 16 plus 25, which is the square root of 31. Okay? And for number 2, um, I can look at this horizontal difference and this vertical difference. This is 3, this is 4, and this must be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. This must extend all the way, which is the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which is equal to the whole number 5. Okay, So that's how you can find distances um, in the coordinate plane, the, the most direct way, the quickest way to find it. I also want to review how to find slope. Now keep in mind that slope is the measure of how steep the line is. Okay, So reading left to right, if it's going up, the slope is positive. If it's horizontal, it's zero. There's no steepness. If it's going down left to right, then the slope is negative. So it's a measure of how steep the line is. We compute it by finding the rise over the run or as an equation, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Okay, But the way that I typically do it is the same kind of triangle method, but th the important thing to keep in mind using my triangle method is that you must keep in mind if you're going up or going down. Okay, And I think about slopes as a direction. Okay, So I'm going to go make this right triangle here. Make this right triangle here, okay? But not just a triangle. I'm going to think about going from E to F and going this direction, okay? And by creating a direction, then I could easily see positives and negatives, okay? So going from E down to this right angle point, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay? But I'm going down, Okay, I'm going down, which is negative 12. I'm going negative in the in the y negative y direction 12. And then from this right angle point to f, I'm going right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? But it's going in a positive x direction, so I'm going to put 5. And the slope is the rise number, negative 12, over the run number 5. In number four, we'll do the exact same thing. Um, I tend to go from left to right. So I'll go from G to this right angle point and then right angle point up to H, making it into a triangle, but that those have direction to them. 
Okay, going from G to the right angle point, it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces in the positive x direction, and so it's positive seven. And from the right angle point going up, I'm going up two spaces, but up is the positive y direction, so it's up positive two. And the slope here is the rise number over the run number. This slope is two sevenths. Okay. The most common mistake I see with slope using my kind of right triangle method is the signs are wrong. Okay. Students just see a distance of 12, distance of 5, and they write 12 fifths, and it's not positive. This is negative. So check yourself. If it's going down left to right, it's a negative. If it's going up left to right, then it's positive. With that in mind, let's now define a dilation. If a dilation with center O and scale factor R sends point P to P prime and Q to Q prime, then the scale factor R is equal to the image P prime Q prime divided by the pre-image length P Q. Okay? The ratio between the image and the pre-image is the exact same as the scale factor. Furthermore, if R is not equal to 1 and O, P, and Q are the vertices of a triangle, meaning they're not collinear, then P, segment P, Q will be parallel to segment P prime, Q prime. Okay? So the two properties of dilations that we'll need to verify a little bit later on is that um, the ratio between the image and the pre-image is the same as the scale factor, and it creates parallel lines. So with that in mind, let me teach you how to do a dilation. We'll start off easy, and the center will be at 0, 0. Okay? Now, um, what we will do is we'll go from the center point to the vertice. Okay, so for point A, to get from the center to A, I'm going left, I'm going left, 1, and I'm going up, 2. So I'm going left, 1, up, 2, right? And I'll multiply both of these numbers, 1 and 2, by my scale factor of 2. So what is 1 times 2? It's 2. What's 2 times 2? It's 4. Okay, so then I go from the center. Okay, from the center, I go left 2 and up 4. And this point right here is A prime. Okay, now B is the same thing. To go from, um, to go from the center to B, I'm going to go the, to the right. I may have said left before. To the right, 3, and then go up 3. Okay, and you multiply both of these numbers by the scale factor. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6. So I'm going to go right 6 and up 6. So from the center, you go right 6 and then up 6. And this point right here is B prime. And so the image of my dilation is this point right here, of this segment, A prime, B prime. Okay, let's do another one. In number five, we will again review how to do a dilation and then verify that we get parallel lines. Okay, to review, two lines are parallel if their slopes are the same. Okay, so my center is at three, negative two. And so I'm going to dilate from the the center 3 negative 2 with a scale factor of 3. Okay, So first, to go from the center to A, I'm going down 1 and going left 2. So I'm going down 1, left 2. Okay, I multiply both of these numbers, 1 and 2, by the scale factor of 3. And so 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. I'm going to go down 6 from the center and left 6. I'm going to go down 3 and to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this point right here is A prime. Okay. Similarly for point B, um, to get to B, I'm just simply going up um, 3. So I multiply that times the scale factor 3. I'm going to go up 
9. So I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This point right here is B prime. And so the image of my dilation is this segment right here, A prime, B prime. Okay, so now I'm going to find the slopes of both AB and A prime, B prime. The slope of AB using my, you know, triangle method, um, I'm going to go from A to B. So I'm going to go to the, now it's, maybe it's a little messy, let me erase my dilation um, notation there. Okay, so from A to B, I'm going to go to the right, 2, and up, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, now again, I think about it with directions. To the right is the positive um, x direction, and up is the positive y direction. So I have a positive rise of 4 and a positive run of 2, and so I get a slope of 2. Now to find the slope of a prime b prime, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to go on this side, so I don't overlap my triangles. Okay, I'm still going from a to b, but I'm going to go up. Um, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'm going to go to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Again, both of those is a positive y direction and then positive x direction. So my rise over run is positive 12 over positive 6, which is 2. Okay. So notice I get the exact same slope, and so they must be parallel. So yes, because they have the same slope. So we just verified this property of dilations, that you get parallel lines when you dilate. The other property to verify is that you get um, lengths that are in the same ratio as the scale factor. So let's do this one. Um, the center of this dilation is at 2, 0, 2, 0. Okay? And my scale factor is 3 halves. Okay, so I'll just do the same dilation that I'm used to. Um, to get from the center to point E, I'm going to go to the left, 2, and up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and up, 6. Okay? And so multiplying that by 3 halves. Now the way you multiply by a fraction, in my head, at least I do, I will first divide by 2 and then multiply by 3. So if I take 2 and divide by 2, I get 1, and 1 times 3 is 3. Okay? And if I take 6 and divide by 2, then I get um, 3, and then 3 times 3 is 9. So I go up 9. Okay? So from the center point, I go to the left 3, and I go up 9. And this point right here is E prime. For f, um, I'm going to go to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to go up 2, okay? And again, using the scale factor 3 halves, I will divide 4 divided by 2 and get 2, and 2 times 3 is 6, so I'm going to go to the right, 6, okay? And then half of 2 divided by 2 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So I'm going to go up 3. So I'm going to go to the right 6 and up 3. And this right here is F prime. And so what I get is this segment is the image of my dilation. Okay? Let me erase this so I don't get it too messy um, as I look at lengths. Okay? Now I'm going to use the method that I taught you um, a little bit ago in earlier with finding distances, that square root method. Okay, um, And so, looking at lengths, this horizontal length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this vertical length is 4. So this length right here is the square root of 4 squared, well I usually do the horizontal first, 6 squared plus 4 squared is the square root of 36 plus 16, which is the square root of 52. And to simplify that square root, I'm going to use a factor tree. And as a simplified square root, I get 2 root 13. If you want to review simplifying square roots, there is a video um, on my YouTube channel. All right, to find the other one, um, I'll again do this Pythagorean theorem method. The horizontal difference is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This uh, square root's this here, it's 9. 
and this vertical difference is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this length right here is the square root of 9 squared plus 6 squared, so you get the square root of 81 plus 36, which is the square root of 117, okay? And then to simplify that square root, I will use a factor tree, and I get 3 root 13, okay? So the ratio between EF and E prime F prime, so I'm going to look at E prime F prime over EF, that ratio is 2, I'm sorry, 3 root 13, this length, divided by 2 root 13, this length, and notice that the root 13s cancel, and I have 3 halves, the exact same as um, the scale factor. Okay. You can also look at the decimals of root 52 and root 117, um, and you'll get the exact same or a very, very close fraction. But the point is that it scales with the exact same ratio as the scale factor. All right, this video is about the two properties of dilations, that the ratio between the pre-image and the image is the same as the scale factor, and as you dilate segments, you get parallel segments. Thank you for watching.